All righty, folks. Do you know the difference between a leasing agent and a property manager? Of course, we were talking about how do we get tenants into your property? How do you select them? How do you run them through? Do you use a leasing agent or a property manager? I have only ever used a property manager, but that doesn't mean it's the right way to go. Let's talk to the CEO of Hemlane, Dana Dunford, and figure out what's the difference in uh, maybe if I need to switch it up a little. How are you doing, Dana? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Michael. Well, do us a favor. Why don't you define in your terms a leasing agent versus a property manager? I think most people realize what a property manager is, but but tell us what a le leasing agent is. A leasing agent is someone who will not do any activities once the keys are handed over. So they find and place a tenant into the property. Once the keys are handed over, then they step out of it. Um, most of the time, not always, but most of the time they, because they also have to be licensed, same licensing requirements as a property manager, because they have to be licensed, they usually do other activities, buy and sell real estate. Um, sometimes uh, they'll do, um, uh, other types of like fix and flip on the side, like whatever it is, usually they're doing something else. Um, and they, they do leasing. There are some leasing agents who only do leasing. They say, mm -hmm. I'm so good at it that I just find and place tenants. And that is my sole job. It's becoming less frequent that you see that. I'd say like 10 years ago, I saw that a lot more often than now. Mm -hmm. But the reason that this is so important to talk about is because 72% of rental properties are self-managed. Yeah. So 72% of people are not using a property manager. And when you're looking at, hey, I need to get myself out of the day to day, I need to become a real estate investor and focus on my next investment, or focus on the financing side of it in order to move myself forward. The question is, how do you get out of the day to day? Well, so much of the day to day is in finding and placing a tenant. And so if you don't want to leap into saying, I want 100% to have a full service property manager. This might be a good step, stepping stone for you to do it. And some of these leasing agents do property management as well. Some of them just on the side, like they do it for some of their clients, right. but it's a very good way to, um, to say, I'm just looking for part of the equation, not the full equation. And I'm okay self-managing. Um, so that's the important distinction. And what's interesting is when I talk to uh, real estate investors, especially first time real estate investors, they don't know that difference. They think it's mm -hmm. all or none. They think it's just a property manager and that they can't have just the tenant placement. Um, note that there's also property managers because they separate their tenant placement fee. Well, they'll do just the tenant placement for you. Um, but there's also just a specific breed of people who say, I'm a leasing agent. I'm not a property manager. Yeah. I think the leasing agent is a very interesting area, especially for the 72% uh, that don't have a property manager. I know Dion from Dion Talk, obviously part of the Three Amigos, he went to Hem Lane to help facilitate that part, right? Because he's the lazy landlord. You know, he does the day to day, the operations, all of that. But he even went to him lane, I think your base package or whatever you call that, because he wanted yeah. access to a larger pool of candidates, right? You take you take his description, publish it out to all these webs, which he he's lazy. He doesn't want to do that. Um, so I think it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, and I just want to qualify. I, I know the answer, but I'm going to ask anyway. The leasing agent will take my criteria and yes. use that to select someone, um, not just, hey, first warm body, let's go. Yep. Then it has to follow fair housing. So typically what that means is that it's a minimum on credit. It's a minimum on income. And then you can, you can't have a blanket statement of saying, if you have something on your criminal record, you know, we can't accept you. So you can't do any blanket statements like that, but it might be something like no evictions within the past seven years or something like that. Um, and they can help advise you on that because they know from leasing other properties in the area what that would that would be. And we've seen folks reach out to leasing agents also just to understand if they have the property on the market, it's been on for too long. Mm -hmm. Great. Talk to one of our leasing agents and see what they say about the price. Because sometimes we'll give the data and they say, oh, the data is wrong. 
And mm. then we put them to a leasing agent. The leasing agent's like, there's no way you can get this price. You have to drop it by $300. And so it's good to have that um, from someone who's on the ground and looking at the rental rates every day. That's actually a really good thought I had not thought of, right? If you're out there and you're exploring a new market, you you know, you don't live there, but you're trying to build a team. I think one of the people you have to meet, right? One of the roles, at least some point is a leasing agent, right? Because yeah. you're probably collecting data points, you know, from realtors and, you know, you know, Zillow and these other rentometer, all these places. But at some point, talk to a human being, right? Who has the responsibility uh, to lease up the properties is probably a pretty good double or, or triple check, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I definitely think so. And that's, I mean, it's interesting because people will say something's biased, whether it's like, oh, the data is biased. It only took these um, uh, listings or the leasing agent is biased because, you know, it's a person. The more of those facts and stuff you can get of reaching out to them and getting the same answers or somewhere around the same answer, then you're like, okay, I know that. Um, it's somewhere within this range that that people have mentioned. That that is that is that is the key of everything I teach and talk about is don't believe anybody, but put it all in one bucket and kind of find yeah. out where everybody's around. Like everybody's around thirteen fifty, so it's it's probably that number. Uh, that's that's pretty funny. So again, a leasing agent um, are they going to help with moveouts as well? I just thought I'd throw that out, or they're just net new. Great question. So typically the responsibility of a leasing agent is not to do move outs. However, okay. every leasing agent I have met does the move out. Yeah. And the reason is, is because they have to do the move in. Exactly. And that their reputation is on the line. If I'm a leasing agent and I ha uh, pass over the keys to Michael and he's like, that's great, but the fridge is full of food. The yeah. ground is disgusting that's going to be my reputation on the line. Yeah. And so typically what they do like to do is once the tenant has moved out, they will document here are all the things I need to have this move in ready for the next tenant because like it. it's my reputation. Then what happens is they give that to the, the real estate investor, the rental owner. Mm -hmm. They say, you go and tell the tenant what you're deducting. Here's how much, you know, it would cost on average to get all this stuff done. Here's some vendors and contractors I have that could help right. you with it. Um, which is super value add that they have that local network, but they say, you need to talk to the tenant. You need to refund the security deposit, but here's what I have documented. The benefit right. of that is it's a third party. It's not you as the rental owner going through and um, doing that, that checklist. Um, so yes, I've seen them do it. It's not part of their job description, but I do believe they do it. They just don't want to talk to the past tenant because they don't right. have a contract with them. Makes but sense. I've seen them do it for their own benefit of saying it's going to make the move in a lot smoother. Yeah, I, I think that's wonderful. They, they would do it. It makes total sense, right? They don't want to open the door the first time and go, oh, my God, this this is not the place. <laughs> this is not the place yeah. for you. Uh, because, again, their, their, their reputation is that client experience. So it makes perfect sense. Now, let's talk about how leasing agents get paid. Uh, usually, I'm guessing it's a flat fee. Maybe it's uh, Maybe it's first month's rent. I have no idea. But how are leasing agents typically paid? Yeah, they're paid flat rate. It's first month's rent, um, which you definitely have to be cautious of because that's where you say lockbox technology, other things is my property. Should I be using a leasing agent or an alternative or do it myself? So you do have to weigh that a bit. Um, but it's it's one month's rent and it's only based on successful placement. So if they don't place the tenant, then they don't get paid. And um, they'll go through that process with you. They'll pass over to you, Michael, and say, here's the qualified applicant. Mm -hmm. Do you approve or deny? Once they have the lease signed, first month's rent and move and deposit, um, then they can charge you. Typically, though, I've never seen a leasing agent charge before the move-in date. They wait till they hand over those keys and then they, um, they charge. Um, there's one other thing that... Um, sometimes they do because typically you request first month's rent and security deposit up front. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they'll say, great, I'll just hold on to one of those. Yeah. And then we'll give you the other one. And that will be basically my tenant placement fee. Yeah. And the other thing I want to remind folks, if you go back to very early, early, early Graham Stephan, uh, Graham Stephan started his journey in real estate during the great recession and he cut his teeth leasing properties. Now they were bigger properties in, in retail spaces and whatnot, as I recall, but you know, there, there, this is, 
some of you, some of you real estate agents that are struggling with selling homes, you might want to step up and add this to your uh, skill set uh, so that you can pay the bills and, and get to the other side of this. Uh, so Dana, in him lane, can people find leasing agents and what service is it and all that good stuff? Yeah, you can search for leasing agents on Hemlane. Um, we work with leasing agents and it's really important to know we don't get a cut of what they make. We don't charge them a marketing fee, nothing. It's totally, we make no money off of the program. Oh, wow. Um, wow. Part of the reason for now. that is- we Stop that. I know. They, well, part of the reason for it is we've actually found there's a huge difference in varying quality of leasing agents. Ah, Okay. And we would rather work with the best. The best will tell you, I don't need to pay you. I've got too much business. Of course. We would rather work with those agents than the ones who say, I'll pay you for any sort of lead that you get. And so our incentives are very much aligned that we believe if you have really strong, strong tenant placement, it's going to reduce your vacancy. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you're also going to have better property management because you have a tenant who is qualified for the property, who can actually afford it. And so that's a little bit about the background behind it. I think I think that is a uh, very wise strategic move, if not maybe dollar wise in the short term. But long term, it's absolutely the right idea, which is always what you were doing in Hemlane. Dana, where can somebody go get a 14 day trial? Because they really do need to play with this thing. Yeah, you can go to www.hemlane.com. Um, and just mentioned Michael Zuber slash one rental at a time for 20% um, uh, off your first year. Very cool. Thank you so much.